This is the Powerlifting America podcast, and today we're talking with superstar athlete Natalie Richards, the first 57 kilo lifter to break the 500 kilo barrier. We talk about overcoming adversity, coaching, Sheffield, and look forward to IPF Worlds in Malta. But before we start, don't forget that Powerlifting America has two more national competitions coming up with University Nationals on April 15th and the grand finale of them all, Sub Junior, Junior, and Masters and Equipped Nationals starting June 2nd. The classic divisions are almost full, so sign up now before you miss your shot at making a U.S. national team headed to the Cayman Islands. Romania, Mongolia, or Lithuania. Thank you to SPD and Aleco for their continued partnership with Powerlifting America. If you're looking to compete in drug-tested powerlifting, whether you're just starting out or you want to compete with the best in the world, make sure you go to powerlifting-america.com and follow us on Instagram at powerlifting underscore America. Okay, with that, let's get to our interview with Natalie Richards. What's up? I've got Natalie Richards, 57 kilo, the first to break the 500 kilo barrier, um, one of the rising stars in the sport. Welcome to the Powerlifting America podcast. Hello, welcome. Nice to meet you again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, great to see you again. Um, so yeah, I mean, do I have that right? Were you the first 57 kilo to break the 500 kilo barrier? Yep. Uh, yep. Got it before Sheffield, before any other world record breaks. So I can officially say I was the first one. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I mean, you've actually did it twice, right? I mean. Yeah, I just wasn't quite at 57 before. I was a little bit heavy. So yeah. now I can officially say. So, been broken. so we made it official at power of the American nationals, um, which you had an amazing performance, which we'll definitely talk about. Um, but yeah, the first question I actually wanted to ask you was just, have you seen any good TikToks lately? <laughs> because... Oh my God. <laughs> no, I have deleted the TikTok app. I never look at TikTok unless I'm going to make a YouTube video because I'll be scrolling and there's just so much ignorance. So I never watch it <laughs> unless I'm making a video on it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, it's hilarious because you have an awesome uh, YouTube account, by the way. Like, I just want to <laughs> plug it for anyone out there who hasn't Thank seen you. it. Um, you're super funny. You find the most hilarious things to to talk about. Um, and like, I, you know, there's there's a guy um, who does these like kind of funny interviews with people. Um, I'm forgetting who the guy's name, but you remind me of him so much. Like, he's like a little bit of awkwardness. Um, yes. <laughs> it's it's a you have a great really great sense of humor so i really want people to get to know you more thanks you should send me send me that guy if you remember what his name is i'll check him out <laughs> oh my god i can't remember uh, his name but yeah i'll just say it. it's like pretty famous i think he's like on barstool sports and he's always asking these super awkward questions and stuff um, i guess another one is like zach galifianakis on between two ferns you okay know, like, i feel like you could easily just like go on that show as a guest and just roast him you know Okay, I'll have to email someone. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see if we can't get you on there. Yeah. Well, I'll call. we'll have our people talk to his people. Um, okay, cool. But yeah, definitely go go check out Natalie's uh, YouTube account. She roasts a lot of like fitness TikTok stuff. What do you think is just like the most alarming thing in general about TikTok fitness related? I guess the most alarming thing would be like all the blatant like steroid use because like mm. all these 17, 8 year old, 18 year olds are like huge shredded have the gym shark fit on like all posting these workouts and natty and whatever it's just like a crazy message and the second most alarming thing is all the like booty bands they sell on that tiktok app like the industry for booty bands is insane like people make so much <laughs> money on tiktok <laughs> yeah exactly no that I, I think that you nailed that i mean uh, i think one of the things that stood out to me when i was watching your youtube was like using women as objects for lifting yeah. you know like this all the like sort of like anti-women uh trends and stuff that you see on tiktok yeah, it's true yeah so, also sexism <laughs> yeah sexism yeah true. that's the most alarming um, Forgot. <laughs> yeah. but that's why i love what you do you know because you like put in a woman's voice into that and kind of like have a clap back a little bit of uh, and <laughs> represent women in a more positive light on your social media so it's really cool to see that Thank you. <laughs> so um, speaking of really cool things to watch, um, did you watch Sheffield? Oh, yeah. I watched it all day. Like I went to the gym. We had it on both TVs at the gym. Then I went home, <laughs> watched it at home, and it was just amazing. Yeah. Yeah. So what do you think overall? What was your what was your big takeaway? There was. It's really hard to pinpoint like one performance. Mm -hmm. But I remember I looked at their lifting cast before the meet even started, seeing how everyone weighed in at if there were any surprises, and saw Evie's weight at fifty under fifty two was just like, mm -hmm. hold on a second, she's forecasted first because everyone had her literally last place every single projection. Yeah, and she just was like, no, <laughs> I'm gonna come in here and have a game plan, execute nine for nine, and win it. So obviously 
seeing that was insane. And then everyone like Jesus, I mean, anything he did was amazing. Um, and obviously I really can appreciate what Ja did on the platform too. She was really, really impressive. Yeah, of course. So, I mean, uh, how closely were you watching? I mean, when you were tuning in, were you tuning, were you thinking like, Hey, I just want to watch, this is a great event. I want to watch the whole thing. Or were you like, I want to really see what these other 57s are up to. I was, I think I was watching more from a spectator and then I, in the, you know, in the back of my head, I was like, okay. In like two months I have to compete against these girls, but we're not going to think about that right now. We're just going to watch them. But it was just as a spectator, just seeing the performance and looking back on the audience who took the videos and the huge arena that they were in, it was just really, really, really cool to see that's in powerlifting now, like that level of magnitudes in powerlifting. It was really cool. Yeah. I mean, I think anyone that wasn't there was had FOMO like crazy, you know, like I was just like, damn, I wish I was there. Like that looked like so much fun. Did you think about going as a fan? It's a little far. <laughs> I didn't. <laughs> yeah. I knew I had to pay, you know, for worlds coming up. So I want to save the money. Yeah. But it, it would have been so cool to see it in person, but maybe next yeah. year. Yeah. I think if it was in the US, you know, we definitely, like, I definitely would have gone for sure. Yeah, um, just too. like the amount of time to travel, especially for athletes like yourself, like you would have to train on the road and stuff, which is never great. Yeah. Um, and, and so I know you're, you know, you have really big goals ahead of you and stuff. So like, you probably wouldn't want to sacrifice training just to be like, a spectator. <laughs> but right, man, right. it looks so cool. Um, what did you think just like overall, you know, like the live stream, the theater that they were in, like the cr- live crowd and stuff. Yeah. The live crowd in the venue was, was so cool. Like I've never seen a power of Dean performance meet, whatever you would like to call it, be like that before it was so so exciting for the future of the sport and then obviously the commentary uh was really good like I'm sure next year they'll make it even better and get some like screams from the audience in mixed in with Ryan's voice and doing that it's just just gonna keep getting better yeah you know I mean the people over at SPD I mean they did something so cool with this that I think now everyone can kind of they've kind of reimagined what a power team meet can be and, yes. and like, they've accomplished that, like, for sure, like 100%. And then it's just a question of like, can you make it like 2% better? You know, like, like, we think as powerlifters, we're always like, can we just get a little better, a little better? And so I'm sure they will be, you know, doing everything to make it even more over the top next year. Um, did you see all the like media stuff that they were doing beforehand? You know? Yeah, that What'd was really cool, too. <laughs> What, yeah, is, was that, is that something that you think is really cool? And I mean, do you think like, it, would it affect you? I mean, um, like, do you get in your head at all before a big competition like that? Would you be nervous, like having to do like a photo shoot the day before a meet? I think it would honestly be good because then I would be worried about the photo shoot and not worried about competing. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be nervous about something else. <laughs> I thought yeah. like the, I mean, this was a professional event. This was a very professional uh, we are, you know, elite athletes going to go execute on the platform. And this is a proper photo shoot. And like they even had uh, like during their commercial breaks between lifts, you know, like the lifters coming on and giving their why they lift and uh, just giving like their kind of backstory and everything. And it was just like really, really cool. Yeah, I thought it was awesome. I, I mean, I kind of talked about this in a previous episode where it's just like it feel it felt like for once powerlifting athletes were kind of given the credit that they deserve, like being treated with that sort of like rock star, super rapper, you know, on stage. Like, of course, like, um, I've been to like, you know, rap concerts before as a photographer and stuff. And like, if you have a famous person come to like, if if I'm living in Boise, Idaho, um, come through town, it's like, of course, you're going to do a portrait of them if if they'll give you the five minutes to do it, you know, and stuff like that. So so That's yeah, I really, just thought it was cool. really cool to like the 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 level that they took it with all the professionalism, and then of course that road to Sheffield series as well. Um, yeah, yeah that's a whole backstory. I tuned into all of those; those are really really cool because you got really invested, even if you didn't know the person, if you haven't talked to them before. I was like invested, like oh yes, let's go. I know your backstory. I know you grew up like this. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, it was I mean, really really cool. Totally. I I felt the same way. And it's like, that's just how it is with any kind of sport. You know, I mean, with any of the major sports that we watch on TV regularly, this is how, this is what we've kind of grown accustomed to. So it's nice to start to get to see some of that in powerlifting. Yep. What's that? uh, What is it that they do on sports center or ESPN? Like the 60 minutes with the athlete? What is that? Yeah, thank you. 30 for 30. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Maybe we can do a 30 for 30 with like Jesus or someone else. That'd be really cool. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I think that's what was cool about the road to Sheffield series is kind of like a little taste of that. It was like a 
a five to 10 minute version of like a 30 for 30 kind of backstory yes. thing. So yeah, that was cool. Was Sheffield a goal for you? Um, was that something in the back of your mind? Like when you were thinking about switching over to power of team America and the going, taking the IPF route, like was, were you thinking about Sheffield at all? Yeah, I think that obviously worlds is the biggest priority, but now knowing that there's even a bigger meet, even a more selective, even a harder meet to get into. Now it's what I <laughs> now what I'm thinking about in the corner of my mind. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Going forwards. Nice. And like looking forward to like the way that Sheffield is scored. Um, man, it's gonna be tough in the 57s. You guys, you know, you and Jod and Joy and everyone. I mean, and there's a bunch of you know, Bobby Butters is out there, and like there's a bunch of people coming up, and um, that's gonna be a tough one because you're gonna have to battle and put up world records at at, at worlds. I know, and like I feel like every year the 57 total gets chipped it's not like blown out of the water by like mm -hmm. uh like 20 kilos or whatever it was in the 76 class but it's yeah, just chipped. yeah it's just chipped every year so i feel like going to sheffield it would be insane but jock you know she placed third in the 50 yeah. uh being a 57 so anything's possible yeah anything is possible and i think um i checked the results too like if you were to switch and let's say they did it by good lift points Jod also finished third on good lift points so it's like right oh. in there so 57s okay. you know if you put up around a total around that i think it's like a 118 119 good lift point something like that oh man okay so cool i didn't know that That's so it's awesome. right there yeah so okay. I, think, I, think, <laughs> I think if they if they were to do a switch who knows they'll probably stick with like a world record or they might come up with something more unique right who knows who knows i don't want to say anything you know about what spd might do <laughs> yeah but um you know that is something to think about but i mean either way like like if you went to sheffield and you even if you weren't let's say like in contention because you guys let's say you guys do something like 510 or 515 or something like that at worlds that's going to be extremely hard to like add another five six kilos to to, to win to like, but so would it be cool to just just go and like kick ass and just you know what I mean like yeah. or is it or is it a thing where like you're just super competitive like I just want to win well I would want to win like <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I would definitely want to win but it would be fun just to go and to be there but I always just go into a meet wanting to do my best so I would obviously just want to do my best at any meet if it was yeah. Sheffield too any yeah. chance you would cut to 52 <laughs> <laughs> I don't know I like food too much yeah <laughs> I don't know about that. That would be a really hard cut. <laughs> Maybe like a long horizon, you know, yes. five years from now, you go up to 63, then you do this. Yeah. You do the EV move like in five years back to 57, you know? Yeah. That yeah. Kind of I'll confuse everyone. I'll go up to 60, 63, then I'll just cut two weight classes down and go 52. <laughs> <laughs> Disguise. Yeah. So in general, um, are you a fan of powerlifting? I mean, do you watch a lot of these big events like this? And like, are you follow a lot of the other athletes like uh, on both sides, like men and women or, uh, you know, just, just women or what? Yeah. Uh, I always try to watch all the big events. Like, you know, Arnold, I went and just spectated and mm -hmm. watched, uh, from a distance and nationals. I watched pretty much every session they had on, like, just fun to see how people do. And I just, I just like watching people, whether it's women or males and just, mm -hmm especially when you see familiar faces too, that you talk to people and know them. I like watching it even more, watch, being able to watch your friends lift and stuff. It's really fun. Yeah. It seems like you guys had like a really good crew, um, with of people that you were with at PA Nats. And then also like, you have like kind of a crew with like Brandon Petrie and like some, some friends, you know, that have competed in Carolina primetime right. in the past a lot together. You guys kind of have a tight bond and stuff. So uh, yeah. that's a really cool thing to see. It's always fun going into these, uh, like invitational meets and everyone has the same like nervous energy. And then when it's over, you guys are all friends and talk and everything. So yeah, it's really fun. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And then like at PA Nats, you were coaching again, like the next day. Oh yeah. My friend, uh, Wesley competed and I got to handle him, which was like slightly stressful, <laughs> slightly stressful, but it was fun. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. You're always like stressing out, like whether it's you. Literally. Or athletes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, let's um, do a little history on you and stuff and like to like kind of take them back, you know, for people that maybe if, if they are just tuning in and they haven't, they don't know anything about Natalie Richards. Um, mm -hmm. Let's go back to Mega Nats last summer, because um, okay. this is kind of the time when like, you know, you, you're a rising star in the sport. I think everyone was picking like myself included. I was like, Natalie Richards is going to run away with this. Yes. She's going to win it all. Um, right. And then, of course, has a lot of pressure, um, you know. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, tell us about it. Yeah. 
So like leading up to Mega Nats, like I've been on a roll, had two back-to-back nine-to-nine meets that I won both invitationals, won Carolina primetime, uh, then won the first VA Pro. That was really fun uh, for women. And then like she just hit the fan a little bit going into the nationals. Like, you know, life things happened. I was stressed out, mm-hmm. you know, shocker to anyone, but uh, some outside factors were going on. And then I wasn't focused going on to meet day. Then I got over anxious. And obviously I just couldn't get some stuff out of my head and failed every single last deadlift on a technicality. And it just happens it is what it is, but that's what happened leading up to kind of mega nats. Yeah. So, um, you're talking about like, you know, some personal stress and things happening in your life and stuff like what's your, what is your day job? Do you have a lot of stress like that comes from your occupation? Um, now no, well, kind of, <laughs> I work like my day job as a project manager. And then I also own my own coaching LLC, which is new this year. So I work a lot, but I love what I do. So it doesn't, it doesn't really stress me out anymore. Cause I just like to do it. But back then I did work, um, more of the medical field, which was stressful. And then like leading up to mega nationals, my father ended up having like a major brain surgery issue all out of the blue. So it was scary for the whole family when that happened. So he was in the hospital and I was like two hours away working, like having my own life and apartment. And I felt separated from him. And then luckily, you know, he got better full recovery, um, eventually throughout the summer, but that was really scary. And then like a month before nationals, I got in a car accident. So my car was totaled and I didn't have a ride to go to the gym or anything. And I was also stressed about that. And then yeah. It was just, it was a rough time going into nationals, but I just tried to prioritize training, but obviously it just like kind of tanked me a little bit. Yeah. I mean, that, that's what ha- it happens. Everyone, um, life right. catches up to whatever goals you have. Like there's always going to be adversity and there's always going to be things that pop up in the, along the way. And especially something like with a, with a parent, cause you're young. Yeah. So to have a parent that's like in the hospital at your age, that's not something that a lot of people have to go through, like the possibility of losing a parent. I mean, yeah. you, you, as you get older, like me, you know, you start to, it's just thought, you know, you start to get a little more mentally prepared yeah. for it, you know, things like this, like grandparents and whatnot, but a parent at your age, that must've been super rough. It was, yeah, it was totally out of the blue too, because my dad's like super healthy. He runs marathons. Like oh, wow. he's, he is an outdoorsman. Uh, he's just the best. And all of a sudden, like he just lost all motor function. Like he couldn't, like he literally just collapsed out of the blue. So no one was prepared for it because he just had like a brain bleed happening. But luckily the doctors went in there, got, took a little hair out, cracked his skull open, got things fixed up, but it was scary for a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. That is really scary. And like, is your, you said your father, um, you know, he's like, he's, he runs marathons. You say ultra marathons. No, just regular marathons, but okay. <laughs> oh, just regular yeah. marathons. Just, just regular reps. Yeah, <laughs> I, slacker. I get, I get out of breath going up like one flight of stairs. So um yeah, I can totally too. relate, you know, just lame, <laughs> lame regular marathon runners. But no. um is is that where you get some of your competitive background from and stuff? Is like from your dad? Does he motivate you and kind of inspire you? Yes. <laughs> I have to send this podcast to my dad and make fun of him some. But uh like growing up, I did a lot of sports and I did, you know gymnastics, volleyball, track, softball. And growing up, I did uh, like four years of softball and he was my coach when I did softball then. Every day after practice, we would go do more practice in the backyard and we would keep working. (laughs) So he's definitely instilled a lot of work ethic, I would say, Mm -hmm. uh, in anything that I do. He's, He's always been very supportive of that. Yeah, that's, that's cool. I mean, um, I know what that is of uh, having a parent that also like coached my little league team. I didn't go beyond that because I was like, I'm done with this, but same kind of thing. Like, well, we're going to stay after and hit ground balls and do all this kind of stuff and push you. And those, yeah. those, um, skills that you gain from sports, I mean, you can apply them in life and to your career and to your job and stuff like that. So it's cool to see. And you, you always hear football uh, players, you know, talking about, or even basketball, like they're saying like, Oh, they're the coach's daughter, you know, they're the coach's son. They grew up with a coach for a father. So it's like, they're smart. They're like a leader on the field and things like that. So um, it's cool to see. Yeah. He's just, he's just my dad. He's just the best. (laughs) I mean, it's all you can ask for. (laughs) That's awesome. That's awesome. So, yeah, I mean, you could see, I can just tell the way you talk about him like that, that would be, that would definitely mess you up mentally um, to have this, like such a, a sudden thing happen right before the meet Um, going into the meet itself at Meganets, were you, 
still confident that you're going to win? I mean, were you seeing like people picking you to win? And I mean, looking at projected totals, I think even going into deadlift, I think you just needed like an, your opener and you would have had like a pretty comfortable lead. I believe if I'm remembering, right. Is that right? Yeah. hundred percent. Like definitely probably not the best game day calls, but it is what it is. Um, I don't know. Going into the nationals, I was like, I wasn't really that confident just because I had okay training, not the best training. Like I had some, you know, nervous about squat depth. I think everyone is always nervous about hitting depth on squats because that's the first lift. And then I always tore my hand going into a meet. So I tore my hand going into nationals. I was worried about gripping the bar. Mm -hmm. And I think when I deadlifted on the platform, I overgripped. And that's why I had that shoulder forward issue um, Mm -hmm. on meet day, just because I wasn't feeling the most confident going in. Yeah. um, Speaking of that, did you, have you by chance read Matt Gary's book? at all Not did you yet. you have i will though i will yeah <laughs> okay 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 um but you have it or whatever oh have you has anyone told you that that you're you're discussed in there oh my god i am yeah no. so so it's it's funny because um why you know, why where are my rights for this should i not get five cents <laughs> on every copy sold <laughs> yeah That's i'll awesome. tell them I'll, I'll call them after this and okay. let them know you know oh, that's um, awesome okay what okay what did it say though okay yeah so um basically you know he was he had been hired to coach celine and um that was right. like the big head-to-head battle that everyone in right. you know you were both kind of you were the favorite and she was kind of the challenger and um, he said that he was scouting you and he noticed that there was an issue with your hand and yeah. he noticed that there was an issue with you, like sort of like getting locked out hundred um, percent. And, and I believe, you know, and so he had kind of had an idea of where he thought your top end strength was on deadlift going into the deadlifts. And um, yeah, and I, I, I can't remember, you know, exactly the details, but there's like, at least like a paragraph about that sort of head to head battle. And it's, that's one of the things that's cool about the book is because you kind of get to see a little bit of a behind the curtains, behind the scenes. Yeah, that is really cool. Um, so yeah, so oh, we had mentioned- America podcast sponsored by Matt Gary. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll that's see if awesome. we can get you a Matt Gary sponsorship. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> get you some free that's books, really cool. you know, a, a promo code. Yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> But it's definitely something to check out. Um, his book is uh, is awesome. And I was just curious, you know, if if you were kind of also like at that, do you, do you take your competition, like do you watch them really closely like that? Or do your coaches do that for you on that end of like, like where he's like basically able to predict like, you know, what he thought you could pull on your third deadlift, you know? Uh, I don't worry about that at all now, okay. honestly. Um, especially since I started working with Steve last fall, like whatever he wants to do is cool. I know that he knows what my goals are and he knows what other people are going to hit. Yeah. And I think that he just puts my total as the priority. And I just think, you know, I don't worry about anything or scout anyone else. I just do my own thing. Yeah. I mean, it'll be something for sure to think about, like, um, for the head coaches for the U S national team going into worlds, because I mean, I think at PA Nats, you know, there, there wasn't really too much of a challenge from anyone. So it was kind of like, you're saying, focus on you and what you're doing. Um, Mm -hmm. but it's a pretty interesting book. I, I, I definitely recommend, um, you know, there's some, some kind of cool takeaways like this, this battle with you and Celine was one, but, um, yeah, that, that was just kind of a, Cause you're also a coach as well. Right. Yeah. And so, um, that might be something cool to think about. And then obviously we, as power of the America, are thinking about scouting your competition, uh, when it comes right. to uh, worlds and yeah. definitely <laughs> I'm already starting to pay attention, you know, and like screen recording and clipping and like uh screenshotting and stuff like all of the nice. little battles and stuff like that. So we'll be ready. Cool. Um, cool. <laughs> but yeah. Um, so at the meet, um, at the, on your deadlift, were any of those challenged, um, your, your deadlifts, you know, like, like, did you get one white light? Were you able, I can't recall off the top of my head, were you able to challenge to overturn it as a good lift? I know on the second one we did, okay. um, with my, with my old coaches. And then on the third one, it was like three reds. So mm-hmm. eh, yeah, because gotcha. I think I opened at 210 and I had tripled like 210 in training, but I just never posted it. Mm-hmm. And like, that's why we opened high. We didn't need to open high in retrospect. Mm-hmm. It was stupid to open that high, mm-hmm. but it is, but it didn't happen. So yeah. yeah, yeah, it is. It's fine. Obviously the issue has been fixed. Uh, yeah. so I don't have any doubts anymore. So it feels a lot better. 
Of course, of course. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, like at the time, I'm sure you were pretty disappointed. I mean, what, what, how, how did you handle that? You know, how did you kind of get over all of that? Yeah. I mean, honestly, I think it's like a huge blessing in disguise because like I would get so like, you think I'm anxious now? Like you should have seen me like a year ago. Like oh, wow. <laughs> I would get so much more anxious mm-hmm. and just really not talk to myself in a productive way when I was going to competition. Mm-hmm. And like after the competition, I almost felt like relieved, like, oh, it's over. Like yeah. who cares? The worst case scenario happened and it's fine. Like you're fine. And Life so life goes on and you know I came back and I won in the fall Carolina primetime two two years in a row and it's totally cool like I feel like I am much more mentally ready to compete and do my best now from that experience so really you know it is what it is it sucked at the time for like a month (laughs) but after that I think it's good Yeah. And I mean, I think, you know, being an athlete, you've been in so many other sports and you've competed, you know, and, and, you know, like you're the daughter of the coach and stuff like this. Mm -hmm. So that whole like compartmentalize and put it behind you and move on to the next one, you know, like there's that famous Bill Pelagic press conference where he's like on to Cincinnati, on to Cincinnati, right? Like it's just, (laughs) I say that every time, like someone misses uh, their third bench, I'm like on to Cincinnati, let's go. You know what I mean? (laughs) That's awesome. Um, yeah. You think that the sports background kind of like help you kind of get over that kind of stuff? Yeah, I think just like, you know, remembering why I like to power lift and enjoying the train again, enjoying like new adventures and new goals. just really helped me too, because like if you dwell on something forever, if you keep it in the back of your mind forever, you're never going to move forward or get better. So it's just not productive. Yeah. And do you think like in softball, if you had a bad game or whatever, like you would have another game like in three, four days or like a week? Um, do you think powerlifting is different? Do you think it like is more like gets in your head mentally, like not just you, but like in general for, for, for all the athletes, because it is this, like, you only get to perform like a couple times a year. So we put so much pressure. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. I think, uh, I would say, you know, on average, I feel like we do put a lot of pressure and a lot of redemption meets and a lot of comebacks and yeah. how we're going to come back better than ever. If we had a bad meet, like, I think a lot of people do that. So Mm-hmm. Yeah, it is a long game in powerlifting. You don't get the chance to compete or play like in baseball mm-hmm. like a thousand mm-hmm. times a week. You have to just play the long game. Yeah, I mean, of course, we can do it anywhere, anytime in the yeah. gym, but it's just not the same. Um, and I think we definitely athletes seem to put like there's a little more of a mind game that happens in powerlifting. I think than some other sports, just because you can you can get that taste out of your mouth like next week you know, at yeah. the next game where we can't, exactly. we got to dwell on it for six months. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so do you think um, you would have switched over to PA if you hadn't uh, faced those challenges at Mega Nats? Uh, I, that's a good question. I was honestly already thinking about it kind of last year um, mm-hmm. at, at that time, because like at my end goal, my, my goal is to go to worlds. That's what I want to do with my powerlifting career. I want to compete at the world level. I knew that. I just didn't know when I would do that, you know, whether I'd want to stay in the pro series, try to win it all and then switch over. But, mm-hmm. you know, I think that having that, you know, bomb out of nationals was an easy switch to say, okay, who cares? Let's just go to, <laughs> go to, go to PLA and go to IPS. Yeah. Clean break. Wow. I yeah. mean, uh, I'm, I mean, good, good thing you bombed out. Um, <laughs> good thing for us. Right. I mean, and, yep. and I'm sure there's other lifters around the world that are thinking like, damn, I wish he had gotten at least like two white lights on one of those. So then we could have <laughs> had to wait another year to have to deal with her. Oh, <laughs> but, um, so then after that you change coaches, um, and you know, you kind of blew up your total, you know, about 15, 16 kilos you put on your total at Carolina prime time. Then you chipped that with like relative ease at PA Nats. And so, you know, tell us a little bit, brag on Steve Arino a little bit over oh here. And, uh, tell us what, <laughs> tell us the secret. Like what, what happened? what do you guys do different? Okay, fine. I guess Steve's okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Steve's fine. He's, he doesn't need oh, the, God, the this guy. Um, Really working with Steve is just like an absolute blast. Like everything is so straightforward. Everything is so explained. Every training block, like he will send 10, 15 minute long videos going over everything. Like he knows exactly what we want to do for that block and how it's going to tie in with our overall goal and how we're going to compete on meet day. And I think that's the most important thing is just having this really solid plan and the expected progression of different lifts has been just a game changer. 
And then, you know, fatigue management, things like that, tweaking, like we've increased squat now and squats going really well. We've done more sets per week and just these small changes has just the small things, they really add up. It's just been really, really good. Oh, that's, that's interesting to hear like the, all the detail, like, you know, mm-hmm. sending you these long videos and things like this. Um, and you know, are there some things that you've incorporated from, from what Steve does like into your own coaching? Oh, I definitely see him as a mentor because he's the best coach, like my humble opinion. Like mm-hmm. I think he's the best coach, like just the critical way. Cause I listen to all of their policy now podcasts and I watch their videos to Marcellus and, um, and Matt and all of them and Sean, and I'll listen to see how they ask questions and how they perceive like athlete feedback and how I can, okay, ask these questions to my athletes to think about, okay, why would I have select this exercise? How is it going to help my athlete? I just think I see all of them as mentors. I just, it's just been super, super cool, especially having, um, Steve as my coach, though I don't do all the trash talking he does. (laughs) <laughs> he's always trash talking me, but yeah. Oh, he's trash talking you. Oh, <laughs> yes. Okay. Yeah. So he's like a friendly rivalry. Yeah. He's like, <laughs> he's, he, told, he told me, I'm trying to remember what he said. He's like, he said something like offhand, like, oh, you're not a squat or a deadlift specialist, but you can, you know, keep working on your bench or something like that. <laughs> I'll have to oh, find wow. It. Yeah. He's, he's trash talking. <laughs> so he uses the trash talk to kind of get you going a little bit. Yeah, I think he's just being a goober, but yeah. <laughs> so so with the changes that you made, um, like I know you also went to mixed grip on deadlift. Um, yep. which lift are you, you know, foreseeing that is gonna you are gonna be, you know, is is your biggest weapon? Hmm. Honestly, I compare it okay, both Ajad and Joy have held the deadlift record. And yeah. like I have the American deadlift record, but they're still a quick bit ahead of me on that front. So I want to say bench because bench, I do have just a little bit of an advantage with my I don't have as long as arms, I feel like I'm more stocky, evenly built. <laughs> I don't really have a specialty, but I think I can get away a little bit more on bench. Okay. Yeah. It looks like, yeah, yeah. I'm look, I'm comparing your numbers right now. And yeah, you've got a pretty good lead. Um, like, like Jad, for instance, missed, uh, hundred kilos twice at Sheffield and, you know, you have, you hit one Oh five, like it, and I, and I did, was able to watch that lift right before we started and it was smooth <laughs> and you moved up to one ten at, at PA Nats took a five kilo jump, which, you know, in a 57 kilo weight class, that's a pretty big jump from a, from a, uh, a second to a third, but mm-hmm. your, your second moved so fast that like, I thought for mm-hmm. sure you're going to have that one ten. Me too. <laughs> I know. Uh, it's okay. I just unracked it kind of weird, like too close. And then it felt heavy in my hands. And then by that point I felt uneven and I missed it on honestly a little bit of technicality and some strength, but I mean, one Oh five moved great. So I've been mad if we didn't try to do one ten. Yeah. Um, I'm just pulling up the, uh, record here to see like where we at. Oh, it's a Donna Berglund situation. One twenty three. Yeah, oh, 120, 123. I know. So, I, only have, I only need 13 more kilos, <laughs> basically. Yeah, like, damn. Like, um, so that's tough. Like, yeah, like you're you're definitely like you're you're a three lift specialist. And so like talking back, like um thinking back to like going to Sheffield and stuff, it's like, yeah, I mean, you it's the total world record that you'll be shooting for, you know, like that's yeah. the one. Um yeah, yeah. and then let's see what's what's the squad in 57. Bobby Butters, damn, there's like a killer like specialist no. <laughs> in, in all three. I know. Um, so <laughs> that is tough. Yeah. You're going to, you, if you go to Sheffield, yeah, you're definitely going to be pushing for, I mean, 185 though, you're only 10 keys off that. Yeah. So from PA Nats. And I think it looked like you definitely had something more in the tank, right? I mean. Yeah. We'll have to see how this training block goes so far. So good. I think we'll probably end a little bit higher than our last training block leading into nationals, but Obviously we want to go nine for nine and not leave any kilos on the platform. So we'll just have to see, have to see like how, it. Pre- how it goes. Don't, don't give away too many details. Yeah, I like it. I like keep, <laughs> keep the cards up the sleeve. So Matt Gary can't coach against you or yeah. anything like that. Yeah. Matt Gary, I'm, I'll squat 200 kilos then. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and I like to hear you say that you had some, uh, some lifts that you didn't show, you know, uh, going in on social media and stuff. I think that's really smart. I know that, Mike Z, the head coach of the uh, U.S. national team going to Malta, 
has asked me to mention to people to not post their best lifts. Really? Like we want to kind of keep some, some cards up our sleeves, you know? Oh goodness. Okay. I'll stop. I've been posting everything recently. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'll pull back. Hey, Sorry. <laughs> as the social media guy, however, okay, okay. I feel very, I like, yeah, it's great for us. I mean, uh, we need our star athletes putting up star numbers so we can, you know, gain okay. big following and get sponsors and do all those kind of things. You know, we got to get you that, that book deal, you know? So <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> um, okay. So you, you did, you know, everything's been going great with Steve and it sounds like, you know, I don't, I think you were competing in the same, uh, I can't remember if it's the same session as Waskar, um, or if it was, yeah. Cause there was only yes. one session that day, I believe. So it might've yes, just been the was, next yes, flight. He was right after me, I think. Yeah. 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 So, um, it was really cool to see Steve, you know, cause uh, I think the pr previous PA Nats, we didn't have any Steve athletes, any P is it PRS or or PRs? PRs performance, yeah. PRs performance. So we didn't have any PRs performance athletes, you know, before. So now we have two on the world team. <laughs> so Steve will be well represented. Um, yes. Do you know off, off top, top of your head, is he going? Is he going to Worlds? No, he's yeah, not. He, he told me it's he wasn't far, going to. I think. <laughs> he told me he wasn't going to, but I was hoping maybe he would change his mind. I think he's going like two other trips this year. So it might just be like one too many, but it's okay. I'm sure he'll be watching from home or I'll be texting him anyways, at least. <laughs> yeah, exactly. For sure. Um, all right. So what did you think about PA Nats? Um, so you, you know, made it official. You did 501.5, you know, first 57 kilo to break that 500 barrier. And, you know, you broke it with what I felt like, you know, watching, watching your demeanor in the warm up room, the way that you and Steve work, um, watching your lifts on the platform. Of course, I'm like, my head is like spinning because I'm watching everyone. But um, I just remember walking away feeling like she's got a lot left in the tank. Everything is going in the right direction with training wise. You and Steve had a great rapport. You seem very chilled out and like very like easygoing. That's good. Um, <laughs> That's so, good. So, yeah, I mean, I walked away thinking like, damn, like, like the sky's the limit here. Like what, it, what might happen after this? Yeah. Uh, Nationals was uh, an absolute blast. Like that was a really fun meet. Like I was obviously nervous, but when I can have my music and get in the zone and really think about, you know, like what I need to think about to get prepared to lift and everything, I feel a lot better, but Nationals was great. Uh, the warm-up room was crazy with all the cameras and SPD's yeah. cameras and everyone else's like private film crew in the back and then every everyone moving around. It was a really, really cool experience. Uh, very professional. It was, it was very quick as well, which I liked. I like how productive and quick we were moving through each lift. Yeah, it was a really good time. It was it was a lot of fun. Yeah, that's good to hear. Um, Cause yeah, it seemed, it definitely seemed on my end, like I said, um, you just, you left a really strong impression. And then also with the press conference, like you're just like funny, like you have such a great sense of humor. You were making jokes and, and um, you and Steve were kind of like riffing off each other and stuff. And like, I just thought it was, uh, you, I walked away thinking like, wow, like this is a star in the making for sure. Um, I can be up, man. <laughs> and, and and also just like like you just seem so chill and like like I said a lot left in the tank and like the the future looks really bright and so how old are you right now? Twenty four. Twenty four. Wow. Yeah. So you're still. I feel young. old. <laughs> I feel <laughs> old. <laughs> no, like that is so young, and I mean, like it's good too because you know Jade is also super young. So like this is going to be a fun battle for years to come. I know I was looking uh, on the official nominations recently and I saw everyone's, you know, they have the birth year up there. And I think oh. like the like top, I don't know how, I'm not sure how old Bobby is off the top of my head, but every, like the first like five people from one to five are like super young, like 1995 to 2002 babies. And then everyone else was kind of mixed going down the list, but it seems like a lot of young people are really upping their game like Jad is only 21 and she's uh, you know going this hard already so it's very impressive to see yeah I mean if 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 um if both countries were deeper in terms of competition at 57 and stuff like you guys might have gone head to head like at, on, at junior worlds yeah, you know? yeah. Um, and so it's cool that we get to see a couple of juniors out here competing for the open world title um just Speaking of the nominations, I'm looking at it. Um, and also, did you notice, did you see Andy Riley is yes. 57? Yeah, I saw that. I saw she did the USBI, correct? That's how she yeah. qualified, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I saw her. I've been watching, you know, I follow her, I see her training on social media. It's going like really well. So she's definitely not someone to just count out. Like she's a very, very excellent competitor. 
Yeah, I was recruiting her. I really wanted her to come to PA um, so bad as a 52. Yeah. Um, and I didn't realize that um, that she was going 57. So I think like she might be doing the reverse EV here and be a, a, like someone that we got to watch out for in that weight class because like, at 52, she's been a monster in the past. And yeah. so like seeing her come up as a 57, like that could be trouble. So we got to keep our eyes on yeah. her, Bobby. Um, and there's a lot of them. There's a young woman from Spain that's coming up as well. So, yep. Yep. Yeah. It's going to be a very, very deep class. I don't think, you know, if you're in the situation where you want to pull for, if you're in fifth place and you want to pull for first, but you could possibly pull and try to get third, like it's going to be some options then, you know, game day time is going to be a very, very deep weight class. Yeah, but we're not going to be looking to pull for anything but first over here. I can tell you that. Correct. Correct. Yes. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Don't even start thinking about third. Um, there's it's crazy um because the nominations, final nomination just came out yesterday. And I saw that there was like there's a ton of lifters. This meet has, I guess, increased like 80% at IPF yeah. Worlds. Uh, it's like 455 lifters. And then in your class, there's 32 with some reserves in there. So, but still like 27, looks like about yeah. 27 lifters when you take out the reserves. Yeah. That's huge. It's a very, very, yeah. I didn't realize how large this world was going to be, but it's definitely grown significantly. Yeah. So I'm curious how this is going to end up working out. Um, I obviously I, in the past, I've seen, they do like a B flight that will be mm -hmm. in the morning and then there'll be the A flight that comes later in a second session. Um, mm -hmm. they usually don't do like two flights, um, in the same yeah. session. So it'll be fast. So we'll see, yeah. but man, they, they got a lot. That's something to think about to get 27 lifters through there. Um, I know. so speaking of, um, kind of back on PA Nats a little bit, what I had another question in here. Um, how yeah. difficult is it for you to make weight? Do you have a nutritionist? Do you work separately with a nutritionist? Are you a nutritionist? Do you do nutrition? Yeah, yeah, I'm a nutrition coach. So I'll do nutrition for people, cut them into meats or just train them in off season, like whatever um, their goal is. But so far making weight has been a breeze. I really don't want to jinx myself because I had like a terrible, like weight gain these past few weeks. So I don't want to jinx myself going into this meet, but in the past it's been like super breezy. Like I did like a small gut cut for PA nationals and I weighed in, I think at 56.3 kilos or something like that. And it was fine. It was good. It was easy. So hopefully we'll have the same going into worlds. So it won't be anything extreme, especially with traveling. I don't want to set myself up to have a stressful cut and fly. So hopefully I'll be able to diet down beforehand. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing is like with the added travel, that's just like yes. the one thing. Have you ever traveled overseas before? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've traveled overseas before and it's been a little bit. I got my passport renewed. So that was good. <laughs> that was <Okay>. good. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, hopefully I'm really hoping not to hold on to too much water weight when I travel, but we'll just have to see how it goes. And do you plan on getting there pretty early? Um, it's like, like two, and half, two and a half days, three days early. So enough okay. to where I can settle, walk some, get comfortable, you know, nothing, nothing too well, crazy. Just everyone now is always talking about Heather Connor's experience last year, you know? So it's like, just, you know, hopefully that doesn't happen. Hopefully if, as long as you're not relying on Delaney Wallace to get you to the airport, then you'll be okay. fine. <laughs> good, good. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> so, um, so talking about you know, the, the reaction to seeing this huge list of competitors at Malta, um, going to the first time probably that you've competed overseas, I think. Right. Um, right. Power, yeah. In powerlifting at least. Yeah. I've never competed overseas, so it'll be fun. It'll be, it's literally my first world's first anything like that. So I'm excited. First of many. I mean, like you mentioned before talking about mega nationals being a big learning experience, going through that whole process and coming out of it stronger. Um, same thing with these world, you know, like this is your first international event. Like there's, there's going to be more, there's a lot of international events that you can compete in through power of America. Like you can go to Sheffield or obviously Sheffield. Um, we definitely want right. to get you in there. Um, but i um, talking like, you know, the different Arnold's around the world, like there's an Arnold's Brazil now, which yeah. will be pretty awesome to go to. And then the Arnold's in the UK, and then you can compete in um, all these different kinds of international things like our North American team go into the Cayman Islands this year and yeah. all kinds of cool stuff like that. So that is it, super cool. being on the international platform and being into that, like on the, the IPF stage, you know, like this will be your first experience, but it won't be the last. And so it'll be another, like one of these like learning experiences as well. 
hopefully you get the dub as well learn and get the dub <laughs> bring back right. gold medals um but what was it like when you saw your name like on that nomination list like with usa next to it i mean is that like you mentioned before that that was always a goal for you yeah it feels like not real like this is not happening <laughs> because it's been my like goal for so so long and i get nervous like even when i think about like oh man i get to travel across the globe and compete against like the best athletes in the world like it's so it's so like i don't have the word for it but it's so exciting uh and it really felt kind of surreal and like a giddy feeling when I saw that my name on the roster and everything. <laughs> That's cool. So that was yesterday. Did you see it or whenever they, when did they submit? Yeah. Before? Yeah. Whenever, whenever I saw it, so I think I saw Waskar post it first and I went and looked so I could see my name too, but it was, yeah. it was really cool. Yeah. And so, um, what does it mean to you to represent the USA? I mean, is it, is it just, just like any, like some, some athletes play it off as like, it's just any other meet. Um, that's nothing special or anything like that, but does there, is there a special meaning for you having USA on the singlet? I'm sure as I put on the singlet and I like really think about it, it will, <laughs> it will mean uh, a lot to me, but right now I'm just trying to, you know, say, Hey, it's another meet. It'll okay. be fine. Do your best, you know, represent your country. Well, <laughs> um, and I take a lot of pride in that and the opportunity to be able to do that on the national stage. So I'm very, very honored. <laughs> Well, you are a good representative of the USA. Like what, no matter what you do on the platform, I mean, we're lucky to have you on Team USA. Like you already handle yourself in, in all facets of your life that we can see publicly, at least, you know, it's like you, you handle yourself super well. And so like, it's, it's an honor to have you on our squad, you know? So thank you, um, thank you. Don't, there's the pressure is, you know, it should be no added pressure for you. It's like, you're already a good representative of USA. And we're, you know, I'm, I'm confident that you'll represent us well, no matter, no matter what the outcome is, but obviously we're going to get the dub. So it doesn't matter, <laughs> yes, but, <yes. laughs> but, um, did you know now we'll, we'll put a little more pressure on this now. Okay. <laughs> um, so I think Mike Z had messaged me yesterday and I got to scroll back, but, um, based on nominations, we got France with 52 points and we got USA with 50 so really oh man this is according to mike z now i haven't added this up i, I notoriously am bad at math so um like but but mike says so now do you know how the whole team point things do you know how this works at all um i just not really i haven't looked into it i saw pete spence posted something about that on his story i think yesterday but i haven't dug deep into it so i'm not exactly sure how the points get divvied out yeah so um it's you know, we want to make this a big thing is like, so kind of pre COVID the USA had won the men's gold medal on team points and the women's gold medal on team points, like a bunch of times back to back. Um, okay. But I was speaking with Bonica before Sheffield and she was saying like, back in the day, it wasn't like that. Russia was always winning. And so, right. and then in, on the equip side too, there's like a lot of Eastern European countries, Ukraine is like really strong and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, but then when COVID happened and USVI was the only option for American lifters to go, that's when team France won on the women's side. Um, and so they got their first taste of that gold medal for team points. And, um, you know, like last year, they were the favorite as well going in. And if it wasn't for Leah missing weight and Meg Scanlon's amazing, like world championship performance, right. um, they would have probably won it again last, uh, last year as well. And they would have been back to back. And so anyway, so on these projections, 52 for France. So the way that it works is that you, they take the five best totals, five best best placings, and mm -hmm. then you get a points assigned for based on where you place with, if you finish in first place, you get 12 points. And if you finish in second place, mm -hmm. you get nine points. So it was a big difference between first and second. Um, and then, okay. and then from there, it goes down by one each placing. So like nine points for second and then eight points for third and so gotcha. on down the line. Um, and then only your top five scores are counted into the total and then that's where you add that up and you get to this number 52 for france and 50 mm. for us based on projections so that okay. being said we're looking at the difference between finishing in first place and getting 12 points and finishing in second place and getting nine points if you win yeah. and beat jod that's that's the game like usa gets okay. 53 usa gets 53 and then uh, they France would have forty nine. Um, so, 
Man, the whole fate okay. of the team is riding on your shoulders now. No, <laughs> absolutely not. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> no, go. no pressure. Um, don't I preface? I don't want to freak you out. You definitely go to therapy or something to okay. you know, hypnotize <laughs> this out of your mind. Um, but yeah, like this battle with you and Jod. That's so cool. Yeah, and and you know, obviously, um, you know, I'm looking in this and I don't see Joy's name. Did you notice that? She's on 63s. She qualified at uh, British UK Nationals. Not okay. British Nationals. Isn't she weighted heavy? Qualified, you know, won her nationals, qualified, and she, I think, is going up to do what I would think a three peat attempt, you know, winning the weight class 52s, 57s, and then 63s. So she okay. moved up, I think, for worlds. Yeah. Okay. So then that kind of takes off some pressure. Um, so it's not as much of a three way battle. Damn, I just noticed that just now. Um, and so, yeah. So anyway, well, you know, no big deal. Just everyone in America, um, wanting you to win so that we can beat France. Um, but, um, but actually though, you know, there's some other scenarios as well where team USA can win. Obviously, um, there's some other weight classes where there's some battles and things and that 63 weight class, a lot will ride on what Meg Scanlon does as well, oh, no. because, this is projecting her in as a third place finisher, which there's no chance that she's going to finish in third. She'll definitely finish in at least second. Um, but I mean, we don't know because now there's a yeah. joint of money in this weight class who can pull a billion. And especially if she doesn't have to cut. Yeah, I know. I know it's, it's going to be so exciting just to watch. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm hoping I can watch everyone after I compete just to cheer them on and see like how the play seems fall. Cause it, it'll be a really close battle with every weight class. Yeah, for sure. I mean, we pick up a couple points here and there. It could be a, the difference of everything. So um, it's exciting. I mean, it wasn't always like that. I don't I don't think um, I, I was looking back at team points in the past and stuff. And there was a lot of times when it was kind of like, you know, not, not as difficult for the U.S. to win and win these like back to back team titles over and over. Um, I mean, obviously, it's always difficult. It's a world stage and there's always com good competitors, but it definitely seems like France um, has stepped up. And so what do you think about that? Like, do you like the kind of friendly rivalry with against uh, Team France? Yeah, I mean, I love watching Team France lift like uh, their technical lifts look really interesting. And then just watching them as a team just almost dominate like every, <laughs> every weight class is, yeah. is really fascinating to watch as a spectator. Obviously, you know, I'm always rooting for Team USA, but um, it's been crazy to see their rise and their totals and it's just go up and up and up. It's just insane. Yeah. I mean, I think it draws, like, it's one of these things where it's like, you can't really have a rivalry until there's a competitor that's like really, you know, can beat you. Like until there's a chance that you can lose, it kind of doesn't feel like on the men's side, for instance, it's kind of like that where it's like, you know, if one or two guys have a bad day or whatever, you know, still going to win. Right. But uh, on the women's side now, it's like it's so exciting because it's like basically every single weight class placing, you know, if if Chelsea Savick can move up from fourth to fifth to third, you know, or if Meg like we talked in Meg Scanlon here, like if she's she's nominated in third, like that's, you know, which definitely she's going to move up. But could she possibly win and be Carol Car Car Um yeah. So it's just makes it more exciting. But so yeah i mean as a, as fans of the sport and everything like i think it kind of gives us something additional to root for where it's yeah. kind of like you even though like like if if you're tuning in and you're like friends just for of natalie richards you're a huge natalie richards fan you still kind of want to see like what happens with the 47s and the 63s yeah. and 69s and stuff um so yeah. it, i think it gives Absolutely. people something kind of a little extra to look at but um yeah, yeah and then um so i mean that that'll be exciting do you feel like with were you happy that jod went up and did a 503.5 do you think that that takes any pressure off of you to like you know that, like you're you're nominated second right so it's like at least a little bit of pressure <laughs> other than i just put a ton more on but yeah. i when she hit 503 i was like my total could have been 506 and a half if i had not missed that third bench press <laughs> yeah, yeah that's what i thought but Honestly, like whether I would be nominated first or fifth or ninth, like I think the pressure the same amount would apply. Like, yeah, it's a world championship. I'm excited to go compete, but whatever the nominations are, I don't take them too seriously. Yeah, of course, of course. Um, but I mean, it's like we did get to at least we got to see what she what she has, and um, right. 
And of course, you know, everyone got to see you just sort of like cakewalk to 501. Um, <laughs> we'll, we'll call it that. Okay. Um, okay. <laughs> but yeah, um, so those are, that's like the, you know, main gist of the stuff that I wanted to talk to you about, you know, kind of like going into Malta and everything like that. And so to wrap up, I have just like some kind of like quick hitter questions, you know, some okay. like fast and loose um, ones, just kind of Give me your like off the cuff kind of top of the, okay. yeah, exactly. <laughs> you okay. got the moves. For, for people right. who are just listening, she's doing dance moves over here. Okay. Yeah. Um, so what's your favorite thing about powerlifting? Uh, probably the adrenaline rush, stepping on the platform. All right. And um, so you're going to get a big adrenaline rush on this <laughs> next one. Yeah. Or pass out. We'll see. <laughs> ah, you're a pro. Um, what do you want to see change in poverty? this isn't really a quick hitter. This is actually like a little bit more of a, of a deep thought kind of question. Um, um, really like just bringing such a huge entertainment value to the sport, like SBD has done with Sheffield, because like that is the end goal just to make the sport like as big as possible and to have as much people, as many people care about it and want to tune in and like they do with even like golf. I think golf is so boring. Like who, yeah. who wants to watch golf, but there are millions of people who watch it anyways, cause they enjoy that. And I want everyone to enjoy powerlifting and just to have huge expos like Sheffield and to continue just ramping up the elite professional level of it. I think that would be really, really awesome. Yeah. I mean, that's definitely the goal. I mean, that's, that's the goal with powerlifting America. That's the goal with the IPF and with Sheffield and everyone, I think in the sport is pushing for that is to just grow it and to make it more of like a mainstream sport that you can watch on television. You know, there's so many, do you notice how many weird sports are on like ESPN? I'm just like, why, what the hell, how are we not on there? I know. And if they do show powerlifting, it's like multi-ply lifting at like 2 a.m. Like it's super weird. Yeah. (laughs) That is so weird to me that it played out like that when we have stuff like Sheffield and Worlds where it's like so professional looking. Yeah. Um, because yeah, I was seeing like beanbag throwing and like dodgeball and like like hacky sack, whatever it is, cornhole. Yeah weird yeah. indoor parkour thing I saw like or tag or I think I saw a tag on ESPN or something like probably yeah sounds about right yeah. Sport, so uh, yeah. anyway <laughs> uh, but um all right um what's your biggest motivation to succeed um, my biggest motivation is just my myself I think I put the most pressure on myself like it doesn't matter but anything outside is happening because I've already put more pressure on myself and wanting to push myself just to be as excellent as possible at what I do so I'm just motivated because I love the sport and I just want to keep getting better yeah yeah you can tell you you definitely put the most pressure on yourself for sure. <laughs> um that's cool though I mean because then if you can survive that it's like the outside world can't tell you anything right so yeah, exactly. I love that exactly. um and so where did you grow up? I grew up pretty much uh, here in North Carolina in Raleigh. Like I haven't moved too far. I went to college in Raleigh, then I've moved around a little bit and now I'm in Charlotte. So I pretty much stayed in North Carolina. Okay. So Charlotte, is that a pretty big city then? Yeah, it's the, I would say it's the biggest city in North Carolina. Like okay. it should be the capital. I don't know. Raleigh's the capital, but uh, Charlotte's like definitely a lot larger and a lot more people here. Yeah. I know they have like professional sports teams. And so I've, yeah. that's why I've, I've heard of yeah. it and everything. Yeah. Um, I haven't spent that much time in North Carolina. It's an interesting state because you have mountains and everything. And yeah. Yep. We've pretty- lived, like we've moved around a lot because my boyfriend was in PA school. So we moved for his rotations, but oh. like we've lived in the mountains of Asheville. We've lived uh, in rural, like North Carolina, like down towards Fayetteville where the military base is. And now we're finally in a city in Charlotte. So it's very, it's a lot. <laughs> I think yeah. I like the mountains better, but it's nice. Yeah. Those, uh, Blue Ridge mountains, I think is mm-hmm. what they are. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I drove through it's that so area nice. a couple of years ago and I was like, yeah, I didn't realize I had such big mountains in this way, in this yeah. part of the country. Yeah. It's really, really pretty. Yeah. Yeah. It's really beautiful. Um, so what was your first sport that you did? Uh, I don't think we can count like when I was two, I did dance class. Cause I, <laughs> I don't think that's, I was not very good at it. I would say gymnastics then. Cause I did gymnastics from like four years old till I was like 11 or something. Oh. So I did gymnastics for forever. Wow. Since you were four years old. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And I was like, you know, <laughs> finish your school and then go to gymnastics. I did that literally the competitive team after, you know, being in, like the little kid area, I did the competitive team and then did like, I don't know, six years doing that. So it was, it was fun. 
Wow. So you have a, like a really, I mean, that's a really extensive background in like an individual sport. Cause I know you mentioned you did softball and team sports stuff as well, but, um, okay. That's interesting. That explains a lot too. You know, gymnasts also are kind of like similar to power tours where it's like, you have to put on this performance that you only get to do once in a while, like very, right. you practice all, every day, all day. And then it, it, you, you know, and then you finally get one chance to kind of show it off. Um, of course you could do more meets in a year at, in gymnastics, probably even than powerlifting, but similar. So, okay. That explains a lot. That's like why you you know, take to powerlifting so, so quickly and are so strong with it. Um, and you mentioned also that you went to college in Raleigh where, what school did you go to? Uh, NC state Wolfpack. Yeah. Oh, all right. NC state. Cool. And oh, Wolfpack. That's their, yeah. okay. Yeah. <laughs> I, I always see, I, people just always seem to call them NC state. Like everywhere I go, um, yeah. they're, they're, they're pretty big. They're pretty good in football too. I think. Yeah, I think so. I, I only went to a few football games. I didn't go to any basketball games. I wasn't really a sports person in college, but uh, like yeah, NC sports. State's yeah, NC State's awesome. I loved it. Highly recommend. That's awesome. All right. So when you're not powerlifting, what's your idea of a good time? Like if you could take oh. a weekend away from real life and just like do whatever you want to do. Um, probably just go outside and go on like 20 different walks. Cause I always like to walk. Our, <laughs> we always like to walk our dog everywhere and just relax, uh-huh. you know, like turn off cell phones and just chill. So I was, if I didn't have to do anything over the weekend, I would just take like a five mile walk or something with our dog. <laughs> wow. That's, that's so easy to like, you can just do that. Um, I you, know. just, you don't need a, you don't need a, like a fantasy weekend. Um, yeah, that's, that's cool. So that's, I'm the same way. I like, actually, as soon as I get off of this, I got to walk my dogs. There you go. There you go. <laughs> You're out here bothering me. Um, so do you prefer mountains or beaches or neither? Uh, I don't know. I love both. Or would you rather be uh, in a city? No, it's too no. many people here. Too many okay. people here. I don't know. We'll say mountains for now. <laughs> okay. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. Uh, do you have a nickname? Anyone, any nickname like that your family or like your dad calls you or anything like that? No, my family likes to call me by my full name. Oh, they really? call me Natalie and all my friends and everyone else calls me Nat because I prefer Nat. But my mother was like, no, no one needs to call her Nat. Everyone should call her Natalie. So that's all right. what my parents All right. So me. we're going to start calling you Nat. All right. I got it. I, <laughs> you know, I was going to mention one thing. I Because I, anytime I'm like looking up your numbers, I like that. If you just go to open powerlifting and you just type in Natalie, you're the first one that comes. So it's nice. Cause you know, if you type in some people's names, like, you know, you got to go through, like, there's so many Johns or whatever you have to put their yeah. whole name in. So I wonder if we just typed in Nat, if you would come up first, we'll have to check that maybe. out. Later. <laughs> maybe, That's cool. Maybe. That's a fun little side flex. Um, you're the highest ranking <laughs> Natalie. In, Yay! In, in <laughs> That's exciting. Um, That's exciting. Who's a person in the sport that you look up to, or like when you were coming up in the sport that you were looking up to? I've mentioned this before and I'll mention it again, but I always look up to Megan Scanlon. Like she was the first person I ever saw and followed on Instagram oh, wow. was Meg. And I was like, oh my gosh, crazy. And um, I used to think like when I first joined social media and powerlifting, I thought mm-hmm. Steph Cohen, Steffi Cohen mm-hmm. was super awesome. I also thought she was natty at the time because I didn't know anything. And then obviously she does tested federation or untested federation, but I really liked her as well when I first started. Yeah. Yeah. Um you know, she's like got a PhD, I think, uh, yeah. Steffi Cohen, yeah. like, and so yeah. it's like, that's, that's one of the things like, like, you know, Ray Williams has a PhD, like some of the yeah. strongest people in the world are also really smart, really hardworking, like I, they yeah. have an academic and an intellectual side to them. That's one thing yeah. I always liked about Steffi Cohen is like, she kind of breaks all these like barriers, um, yeah. being super smart, super jacked, like all that stuff, like kind of go, it's really cool. Um, really, but, yeah, I still follow her now. Yeah, I like watching watching her stuff and boxing. Her new boxing agenda is really cool. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you're not going to get into boxing though, right? I don't know. <laughs> it looks really fun. <laughs> oh, really? You might yeah. be into it, huh? Yeah, yeah. I kind of wanted. I want to do like MMA fighting for a while, and then I realized that I probably get a concussion, so then I kind of stopped doing that. So I don't know. Maybe. Oh, well, if you um, get a chance to talk to Turbo Tiff, you know, she's a former boxer who's come over this way um, and done really well. So maybe, maybe yeah. you get a little boxing, maybe you talk to Steve and see if you get a little boxing into your program and it might take okay. you up a, a notch. Yeah. Um, awesome. <laughs> but speaking of Meg Scanlon, I mean, like, she's just like so inspirational and like her to win worlds last year. Like, were you watching this all go down at worlds? Oh yeah. What, oh, were, you yeah. Thinking, what were you thinking when you're seeing this go down and like, I mean, 
she pulls it off by the skin of her teeth. I know. I think it was just like so much her time to like win it. Like it was just, it was her day to go out there and just take the gold medal. And it was very, very awesome to see her do that. So how does it feel now? Like as her being someone that you had always looked up to, like now you're on the same team, you know, and you might be lifting maybe, maybe the same day or maybe the, you know, the day after each other and, you know, helping each other out traveling, um, you know, being on team USA together, there's like little things that you'll do together as a team over there and help each other find like, um, you know, where to go to restaurants and things like this. So like, what's it feel like, you know, being on a team with Meg, like an, an idol of yours? I think it'll be uh, really fun. I got to meet her briefly at Kyle American Nationals. Uh, she's just like the nicest person ever. So hopefully we can hang out some and just get to know each other and I can get to know the rest of the team um, too. But I think it'll be a lot of fun. Yeah, I think it's cool um, to kind of like feel like a little bit um, like you kind of on the team, Steve, uh, PR's performance. I always, I always say PRS. I gotta remember that. Um, just, just say team Stevo. <laughs> team Stevo. Um, yeah. you know, do you like, you guys feel like you're on a team like you and Waskar? Are... Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Like I'll like text or message Waskar. I'll be like, what's happening? Like, how are we booking hotels? Like literally what are we doing? Yeah. Um, and it's just nice to have like a teammate who's also going to worlds too, and just be on the same page. I'm like, Hey dude, like, my weight is not going well. How's yours doing? He's like, oh, same thing or whatever. You know, we just talk yeah. about things like that. So it's nice. God, he's probably a bad one on that because he's like so disciplined. Like he never eats any like cheat meals or anything. Like uh he's yeah, he's so disciplined. <laughs> he's like I needed he's, to, no go ahead. Yeah, I needed to rub off on me. So I'm like, he's just very regimented. It's very good. Yeah. He's like that perfect student, you know, it's like kind of almost <laughs> a little annoying. Like it's like, okay, yeah, we know Waskar is like perfect. He does everything right. Yeah, um, this is Waskar. This is him on Team Steve, and then this is me on Team Steve. Like, <laughs> I'm trying to get back up there with him. <laughs> He's like 100 percent on everything. Does extra credit, yeah. all this kind of stuff. You're just like cramming in the night before the exam, like turning your papers in day late. Pretty yeah. Much. Yeah, I could see that. Um, but he's he's such a, you know, nice guy, cool guy to everything, you know. So, I mean, yeah, I hope that you kind of will start to get that same vibe with the whole Team USA, you know, because yep. um, like we definitely want to kind of create this atmosphere of like we're all in this together um, on Team USA. It's like us against the world, you know. Yeah, definitely. Um, OK, a couple more. What's your favorite sport to watch? Other Ooh. than powerlifting. Uh, honestly, like I really like to watch um tennis whenever it's on like Wimbledon oh. or us open i just really like watching i don't know why tennis it like enthralls me when i see it on tv it's just really cool to see how people can be down by like because uh, you, you know in tennis your goal is to get to like six um up with two points ahead but like people can be down by four and they'll be like coming back up and just get five points in a row like it's just crazy it's crazy to see these comebacks so i like watching tennis a lot yeah, that's a, that's, that's actually the same thing for me. Like I love, I, anytime tennis, my mom is super into tennis and like, she'll always turn it on when she's at my house and stuff. Yeah. And I just get sucked in like a moth yeah. to a flame. I'm just like, like watching. And it's like you said, I mean, it's not, it's not over until it's over. And yeah. tennis, like you could come back all the way. Like if, as long as you're still out there playing, like you could come all the way back, no matter where you are in the match. Yeah, it's it's insane. Yeah, people are literally down, and the crowd could be, you know, like not clapping or cheering for them at all, and they just come back every single yeah. match point. They just come back. It's crazy. That's cool. So, who's your favorite tennis player? Um, what's that? that? What's that? Uh, I really I used to like to joke bitch a little bit. Um, Nadal on the men's side, and I can't remember what's that. Uh, really young lady's name who just I can't remember what her name is but whoever is like the young one with the new like skincare line whoever she is <laughs> I really liked her um yeah. I think she's pregnant but so she won't be competing soon but oh she man was really, really we're cool. we're both uh so bad I, I'm like trying to like look this up now like damn I can't think of her but Serena Williams for me is always been oh, yeah, like, Serena Williams too. crazy and then like growing up like I was like in like the Pete I'm older you know so like the Pete Sampras Andre Agassi like era was okay. like super cool um cool. but yeah uh, tennis is cool there's a new documentary on uh, Netflix called uh Breakpoint I think or something very okay. interesting like if you like tennis you'll definitely like it you should check it out okay I'll have to check um, it out then as a football guy though I gotta ask you like what's your favorite football team if any well, I got a brute, I guess, for the Panthers because I'm in Charlotte. So, mm -hmm. 
Yeah, even though they suck. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. yeah, I guess Panthers and then my dad always likes the Cowboys. So we'll, we'll support them too. Yeah. Okay. You got to, so we've got to go with the dad's team for sure. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Interesting connection. Carolina Panthers, uh, they fired their head coach and then he was hired by my college football team, Nebraska. So let's That's see how crazy. that goes. I don't know. I don't know. He should have never been hired. Like he had no experience in the NFL. I don't know why he was hired. <laughs> and then now I'm saying, why did we hire him? But hey, I don't know. Good luck. Good luck. <laughs> hey, my other team, Kansas City Chiefs. It's all right. They're, they're yeah. holding me down while the Nebraska Cornhuskers are just killing me year after year for the last like 15 years. So sure. it's all good. Sure. We got one at least. Yeah. Um, all right. What music genre do you like the most? Um, either regular classic, like American rap, um, or like I listen to a ton of like, uh, Latin music, like, uh, Bad Bunny, Mike Towers. Uh, yeah, I like a lot of like upbeat stuff. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I was going to ask about that because yeah, you picked out a, a song for your reel for PA Nats and you picked a Bad Bunny song. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I remember Sam was telling me, he's like, this is like a really, this song is really good. It has like a... It's like a popping song that like really helped that uh, blow up on social media, I think, too. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I just really like that song. I like I've been uh, Mike Towers just dropped a new album. So I've been listening to him a lot. And then I'm sure I'll be listening to more Bad Bunny this summer, too. Yeah. So who um, who would you say is like overall, like, you know, a couple of your top favorite rappers? Um, Let's see. I will say currently I like to listen to Travis Scott, uh, Kanye West, but only his old stuff like Homecoming, Wonder, Flashing Lights. Um, and then I don't know who else I've been listening to. I listen to some Lil Wayne now and again too, uh -huh. some old Lil Wayne. Yeah. Do you like uh, J. Cole? Oh yeah, I love J. Cole. Yeah. Okay. And what about ASAP Rocky? Do you like ASAP Rocky? I, it's hit or miss. Sometimes I really like him. Sometimes I'm like, okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. Cause I'm trying to scout. Cause I'm going to like put, when I make posts for you and stuff, I make sure to put on some songs that you like <laughs> some artists that you like. I love J Cole. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Sweet. And old Kanye. Got it. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I think everyone's pretty much in the same boat on that one. Yeah. Um, okay. okay. Um, just last one. We'll just do the movies like genre, like what, what genres do you like? And like, who's your favorite actors? Hmm. Uh, I have a, like not the best attention span when it comes to movies, okay. so I don't. <laughs> I'll watch whatever uh, my boyfriend wants to watch, though. So we'll do like a lot of horror movies and watch those, or a lot of anything Marvel, DC. We'll watch those too. Don't yeah. ask me about any of the characters. I don't really know, but I'll watch the movies. They're good. Um, same, same here. <laughs> like I'll put it on if someone makes me, but I don't know anything about Marvel or DC or anime. Honestly, I feel so out of it. Like you're, you're, everyone answers this. They love Marvel, DC stuff like that. Um, but okay. You say you're not really into movies. Like, is there like a, a show, like a Netflix show or HBO? Like, do you like Game of Thrones or like Succession or any of these shows that are on? Yeah. Uh... I used to be like up to date. I used to watch these when they came out, but mm -hmm. I've gotten so busy where I don't, I can't watch as much TV anymore. So I just watch reruns of uh, Family Guy or American Dad or Parks and Rec. Or oh, the perfect. Like, <laughs> that's, that's all awesome. I watched. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. It's similar stuff. I like that kind of stuff as well. So yeah, yeah. like we have such similar tastes, like rappers, uh, shows, <laughs> like in Malta, we'll just find some family guy yeah. or some parks and we'll rec. Chill. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Perfect. That sounds awesome. So, um, Perfect. okay. One last thing, um, a little bit more of a serious question here is just like thinking about women, women in powerlifting and coaching in powerlifting. Um, someone brought this up to me the other day and I thought of you, um, they were asking me like, you know, um, it seemed like, I think we were at high school nationals and they were basically like, you know, there's not a lot of women coaches in the warm up room and you don't see a lot of women. And they're like, who can you think of like from Austin, um, women coaches. And it was like, I, right away, I thought it was, you know, Susie Gary was back there. It's like, she was like coaching all yeah. weekend and in, in, at the highest level. And then from there, I was like, well, Natalie, I remember Natalie was coaching someone. And I remember Meg Scanlon was coching someone. Um, and I think you guys might've been coaching on the same day. Um, you, that might've been in the same session. You guys might've been coaching someone there. And then I thought of like, you know, like Claire Zai was competing. She's, mm. she, one of her athletes was there, but I, uh, Michelle Robbins. And then, um, 
The other one was uh, Chelsea Savitt. You know, she's coached by Kristen. So like yes. those were the ones that came off the top of my head. Um, but, you know, when you hear these like discussions of like, who's the best coach in powerlifting, oftentimes it's like all guys. It's like, you know, Joey Flex and Swell Fesser, Marcellus, you know, and Steve, like you said, like Steve Denovi. So yeah. just like talk a little bit about like, you know, do you think women face like added challenges? Um, because a lot of it, you all, but other than Susie, I mean, even Susie is a superstar athlete. I mean, has like yeah. so many world championships to her name. I mean, does it just take being a star athlete in order to get a, a roster uh, coaching from right. being a woman? Right. I think uh, I was thinking about this earlier this week too. And I think Sam Calhoun, who's, you know, also a, a big coach um, on, on powerlifting, like she posed this question as well. Like, do you think women have a harder barrier to climb when it comes to having and retaining, you know, powerlifting athletes and Honestly, you know, like let's look at the breakdown of percentages. Like, is there a larger demographic of men versus women in powerlifting? I think we can say there's probably more men competing than women yeah. total. So mm -hmm. it, I think it just depends on the situation. You know, sometimes are we rare occasions will I get someone who's sexist and won't hire me because I'm a woman? Sure, mm -hmm. who cares? I wouldn't take them on as an athlete, anyways. But like, I think that as long as you are a capable coach, you put out good information, you, um, really explain your process. Like that's what I look for in a coach. Are you explaining your process? How do you treat your lifters? Do you have good communication? Do you post meet recaps and explain like what happened? Like, how are you presenting yourself online and how do you treat your clients? I think that even word of mouth, like I've heard so many things from so, so many different people about coaching, yeah. like how their coaches have treated them, whether it's good or bad. And I think that is really just how you build your rapport in your, uh, client base as a powerlifting coach, especially when you do it full time. I was using Sam as an example, but she's coached for so many years now and she's yeah. just built up the brand Sam Strong. So now when I think of powerlifting coaches, I think of Sam Strong. Mm -hmm. um, same thing with uh, Steve, like PR's performance been around forever. I think of Steve and I think of his content and his athletes. And when you can really just show, you know, your athletes off and how well they're doing or what's going on or how you're rehabbing injuries, I think that makes you a good powerlifting coach. And sometimes you will have some extra barriers to climb. Maybe there'll be some shitty people online who just yeah. hate women. Okay, that's fine. But, you know, as long as you can continue progressing and working on your craft, I think eventually you can build that kind of base. Sometimes it does help if you're just like a jacked 17 year old on steroids with a tank top on because people yeah. will say, hey, you look great. <laughs> can I hire <Yeah>. you? <laughs> you know, like that. Sure, that can help. But I mean, like, and I think the situation depends. Sometimes there are, sometimes, you know, you just have to put in the work and build your base. So it's kind of a mixed answer, I guess. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, um, I'm, you know, I think we kind of in a way like struggle with the same question where it was like, I had to think about it for a second, you know, yeah. um, whereas I feel like off the top of your head, you can always name like five, like male coaches that are like yeah. so-called like superstar coach or whatever. Um, uh, the other one that the coach that I love, like getting back to one of our, both of our favorite lifters, Meg Scanlon, uh, mm -hmm. Kelly Mann, you know, like right. he just has taken Meg and just like done worked magic with her. So I'm like, I feel like she's like one of the hottest coaches right now. Like everyone should be trying Definitely. to sign up with her, um, Definitely. just from yeah. off of the performances that she's put up with Meg. And then, like you said, Sam, that's a great one. Um, mm -hmm. Yep. I remember. When I was looking for a new coach, uh, Meg actually reached out to me and highly recommended uh, Kelly that yeah. she just bought the world of her. So, yeah. yeah. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it's good to see. And it was <clears throat> it definitely, I mean, I remember just thinking back on PA Nats, like I said, and then I'm just thinking of like women in the warm up room that were yeah. coaching and stuff. And you're one of them. I mean, so like you're definitely a leader in the sport. Um, you're obviously, you know, the first, the first the firstest, the first, <laughs> first 57 <laughs> kilo lifter to hit the 501, um, break the 500 barrier, you know, going to go on and be a role model as an athlete. But I think it's really cool to see, you know, you also coming into your own as a coach, you know, and uh, people take you seriously as a coach as well. So I think that's a really cool thing. And, and so plug your coaching service. What is the name of it? Uh, it's objective strength and power. Um, you know, like I started this in January of this year, I've been coaching for many years, three years prior, four years prior, but I finally started my own business just because I love it. And this is what I want to do. I just really, really love being able to watch, um, all sorts of athletes just grow to their own, whether they want to compete and be super competitive or whether they want to have fun, whatever their goal may be, um, especially just being able to 
these work people every day. It's just so rewarding just to be able to have that communication and, you know, see the numbers and have fun with it. So it's been, it's been a really good time. Yeah. And then do you have any sponsors or anyone that you want to also sh- give any shout outs to? Um, shout out to SPD, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> you sponsored this whole podcast. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> We love you. <laughs> um, uh, when is this, when is this podcast being dropped? Uh, it'll be probably be today. Uh, today? I'll okay. Post it later I have, today or tomorrow. I have a later sponsorship next week, so I won't say who they are, but. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So everyone follow Natalie Richards on Instagram. You'll see who it's Nat lifting. Is that right? Yes. Nat underscore lifting. And Nat underscore lifting. Make sure to follow her on Instagram and you'll see the big news that she's going to drop with a new sponsor next week. I hope it's like Toyota, <laughs> Gatorade, you know, like it's, one of these. Actually, it's Matt Gary's book. <laughs> 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 <Just kidding. laughs> That's hilarious. Um, I'll make sure to tell them about that. Um, but yeah. Okay. All right. Well, Natalie, thank you so much for joining us on the Power of the America podcast. It's been awesome. Just like, I hope people get a little chance to know you. And of course, can't wait to just like promote you leading into worlds and then to just you know, document the whole process uh, at Worlds when you bring back that gold medal for Team USA. So, <laughs> oh, thank you so much for having me. Really appreciate it. It's nice to sit down and chat. It's fun. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, we'll do it again sometime. So, all right. Well, okay. thank you again for your time. And with that, uh, peace out.